Welcome back. When we last left off from this dumpster fire, Carrie was crying her eyes out at the dissolution of her six-month situationship with Manhattan's most slippery playboy. If you thought last season was bad, this season kicks it up a notch and features big at peak audacity. Where can you go from there? Where? 11, exactly. Why don't you just make 10 louder and make 10 be the top number and make that a little louder? These go to 11. And carry at hell levels of low self-esteem. One month into her post-big depression, her friends force her to leave the house because if Carrie isn't ignoring her friends for a guy, she's ignoring them because she's moping over one. Just when exactly do you think you're going to be getting out of this hostage situation? What? Am I wrong? Don't listen to her, Carrie. It's only been a month. She's unexpectedly dragged to a baseball game where she meets an up-and-coming baseball player who becomes her latest attempt to get over big. I'm going to ask him to the Dolce & Gabbana party. While Carrie was afraid of running into Big before she met the new Yankee, her fears eventually materialize while she's on a date with him. Sorry. Breakup rule number four. Never stop thinking about him even for a moment because that's the moment he'll appear. Big knows Carrie is still into him, so all he has to do is touch her shoulder and tell her that she looks good before giving her this odd, threatening glare while leaving, and her emotions run crazy. Saw your picture in the paper. Never look better. You want another round? Carrie throws up in the new Yankee's mouth. I just cried in your mouth. And then tells him to f off before running away because she's obviously not ready to date again. Carrie's 33rd trip around the sun is coming up, and she gets flowers sent to her from Big and then calls to thank him. And I just wanted to call and thank you for the flowers. That was very thoughtful of you. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, my, my secretary had it on her calendar, so I, you know. Oh, so your secretary sent them. I sent the flowers. My secretary alerted me to the day. Oh, well, that was very thoughtful of her and you for sending them. Then she invites him to her birthday party. Stanford's arranged this party down at Layla. You know, it's that Moroccan restaurant. You should come. The instant the words popped out of my mouth, I regretted them. Because Big is a pimp and loves to mess with Carrie's head, he tells her he may bring someone, so she naturally assumes it's another woman. Uh, I may bring someone. Well, yeah. Uh, come and, and, and bring that person, and uh, maybe I'll see you later, and... And thank you again for the thoughtful flowers. It's actually worse, his ass friend Jack, who very obviously isn't too fond of women. Just spit up with a bitch who broke my heart. At least she didn't get my money. I'm going through my second divorce. Bitch is getting everything the first bitch didn't. Do you ever shut the f up? And I'm still a piece of garbage. In true pimp fashion, Big gets a lap dance from not one, but two belly dancers right in front of Carrie. What is your ex doing at your birthday? I told him to drop by for a drink. They walk together after the party, and Carrie states the obvious after he leaves in his pimp mobile. As I watched him go, I realized the one thing I couldn't say to Mr. Big was, I'm still not over you. Later, the girls end up attending a funeral for a fashion designer, which leads Carrie into a semi-existential crisis. How did any of us know how much time we had left? Hell, sometimes I felt like I was barely living. Hello? Hey. Hey. It's just me. Big sets a date, and Carrie begins spiraling immediately. I had my date with Big. I was feeling everything. Fear, happiness, dread. Was I ready to jump back into a life with Big in it? Was seeing him again a huge mistake? And if it was, why was I so excited? At the dinner, it's pretty obvious that Big wants to smash, but Carrie leaves him with blue balls at the end of the date, suddenly realizing that this is a bad idea. Suddenly, getting back together with Big seemed like a very bad idea. Once again, this will be one of the few times we see Carrie making a good decision for a change. After ignoring four of his calls, Big shows up unannounced so he can continue playing with Carrie's head. Good, you're alive. Hey, wait, where are you going? They make out, but then Carrie drags him to a bowling game to delay the inevitable. I won. Okay, two out of three. You want to play a second game, huh? Maybe. Are you sure you're ready to get killed all over again? Yep. Let's do it. Oh, shit. 
here we go again. When Carrie is at Biggs making the nastiest looking fondue ever, it's horrible. She tells him that she hasn't informed her friends they're seeing each other again. He agrees that it's best to not tell anyone, AKA keep their relationship as friends with benefits. I haven't told any of my friends we're seeing each other again. Neither have I. Well, that doesn't count. You have no friends. I have interested parties. Then why haven't you told them? I sensed you didn't want me to. Bull well, what do you want me to tell people? Nothing. Good idea. Let's keep it quiet. Carrie walk of shames at home and runs into Miranda, lying that she's getting her teeth cleaned and not having casual sex with a guy she very clearly wants to be in a relationship with. Miranda, oh my God. What are you doing up here? Oh, uh, teeth cleaning. At 7 a.m.? Well, I just, I like to get it over with. Now that she's back to her drug of choice and emotionally unavailable finance bro, she begins lying to her friends about seeing him. But I really don't, I don't feel very well. What's wrong? I just have a headache, it just hit me. You're kind of dressed up for the dentist. Oh, laundry day. I had never lied to Miranda before. The truth was I was cheating on her and all my friends with Mr. Big. Until she's finally forced to admit it after this. Is everything okay in there? This is embarrassing, but I, I got a new diaphragm and it's stuck. How long has it been in there? Since last night. You mean while you were out getting your teeth cleaned this morning? It was. Yep. I'm either going to have to make an emergency visit to my gynecologist or one of you is going to have to give me a hand. Go. Listen, Samantha was a real one for this. Who are you sleeping with? It's Big. What? You're sleeping with Big? What makes you think it's gonna be any different this time? It just, it kind of feels okay. If it feels okay, why are you sleeping behind our backs? Because they're right, Carrie stomps her feet and leaves. Big takes Carrie dancing and per Carrie's narration, It was like he knew that I needed to talk to him and decided to make it as difficult as possible. Because Carrie is the only person putting effort into what will eventually become round two, she of course has to be the one to ask if they're back together. So does this mean we're seeing each other again? If you say so. Bruh. Big dances around all of Carrie's concerns as per the usual and just spits more game. I don't know what officially means. Officially means officially. Oh. You know, for real. Every moment of my life is for real, baby. <laughs> Why do we break up? You tell me. You guys notice how they never answer each other's questions? How old are you? How old are you? If I make that call, are you going to be there for me? Are we going to do this really? Carrie, in or out? Why didn't you call? Why didn't you call? You leave tomorrow at 5? How about lunch? I'll come over around 2? I can't believe you're leaving me alone with a horse and buggy. I sure did miss you, officially. I guess we were back together. Since Big has Carrie where he wants her emotionally, he begins breadcrumbing her. She asks for a spare toothbrush while at his place, and after receiving one, she literally says this. There's only one pink brush head, and Big was giving his to me. It was the single most encouraging moment so far in our relationship. Okay. Girl, aim higher. Also, I guess she's not brushing her teeth. Carrie is too nice to say no to anyone, so she agrees to write a poem for Arlene, I mean, Madeline, who snatched Miranda's prospect right from under her nose and got engaged to him like two seconds after meeting him. While the two are in bed, Big agrees to attend the wedding in a show of support, although he's making fun of her writing. Love, glove, dove. Love is like a dove. Or a big fuzzy glove. Don't use that, I might have stolen it from a greeting card. This is fun. It's not supposed to be fun, this is somebody's wedding. When is this wedding? It doesn't matter, you're not going. Yes, I am. I wouldn't miss you reciting Love, Glove, Dove in front of all of New York for anything. <laughs> this is the first episode where they're returning to their normal coupledom, so naturally Big is overdue for a major letdown. When he shows up to Carrie's, he's unusually cold, standoffish, and pissed that somebody knows his basic ass real name. Hey, I left the card here for you to sign. I don't need to sign it. They're your friends. They're not my friends, and your name's on the invitation, too. It was my first time to get something other than Carrie Bradshaw and Guest. How'd they get my name? Um, I don't know. I guess Madeline must have asked Charlotte or something. As if this weren't bad enough, in the middle of Carrie's poem, Big takes a call and leaves the room. His forever was as simple as her smile. And suddenly it hit me. Bruh. Two people were committing to a life together. I couldn't even get a guy to be on a card with me.
He said she was what was missing. She said instantly she knew. She was a question to be answered. And his answer was, I do. They've only been back together for one episode and this man has already made her cry. Big took a call during my poem. It's not important to him. Nothing is important to him. Did I miss anything? You missed my poem and most of the reception, but there's nothing like a slow dance to make you forgive and forget. Uh, maybe later. I hate to dance while people are eating. She brings up the fact that he wouldn't sign the card, which almost sounds like a soft launch into a breakup, but then Carrie shoves her true feelings aside and instead implies that she's pissed at him for not taking the wedding of someone she barely knows seriously enough. What's wrong? You wouldn't even sign the card. <sighs> Card. I'm afraid we don't want the same things. Things like cake? I want someone who's going to be with me until the end of a wedding. Big knows Carrie only needs the bare minimum to be happy, so he agrees to stay until after the bouquet toss, which I'm pretty sure he was going to do anyway. Okay. I'll stay. You will? Yes. Big and Carrie go on a date, and Carrie is elated when Big refers to her as his girlfriend. Carrie, this is Paulo. Paulo, this is my girlfriend, Carrie. You've never called me your girlfriend before. Sure I have. Just not to your face. I'd like to dedicate this song to the lovely lady sitting right over there. It was perfect. I felt like I was in heaven. And just like that, Carrie is sprung yet again. Big's game is working so well that Carrie ditches Miranda to watch him cook a piece of veal. Hey, where are you? I've been waiting here forever. Is everything all right? I thought you were dead or something. No, no, I'm fine. I'm at Big's. You and I are having dinner tonight. He got this veal. He wanted to make me dinner. So you just dropped your life and ran right on over to his. Miranda, rightfully pissed that her friend is a major pig, Misha, lays this uncomfortable truth on her. Your relationship is exactly the same as always. It's all about him. Carrie asks Big to meet her friends to prove Miranda wrong. I have a huge request. I want you to know my friends better. I know your friends fine. Okay, then I want them to know you better. They've never really spent time with you and- Carrie, what is it you need? <laughs> Side note, it is all Carrie's fault that she ends up with Steve in his skid marked underwear. <laughs> Carrie still isn't aware of Big's obvious pattern, which I liken to that of a sine wave, and that for every time he's not being a douchebag, he immediately follows it up with being a douchebag. The girls have a discussion about relationships changing overnight, and Charlotte, ever the delusional Pollyanna, actually thinks Big and Carrie's relationship has. Charlotte, honey, have you actually ever known anyone whose relationship changed magically overnight? Mm, yes. Look at Carrie and Big. Miranda doesn't agree. How? Tell me, how is it different? Just a feeling. I don't know, something shifted. It's like, um, maybe we both know that if we came together again, it must be for a reason. <laughs> Back in slippery mode, when Carrie shows up to his apartment to have a drink before he meets her friends, he cancels on her. You mind if I don't go? I mean, I've been out all day. It's gonna rain. But my friends are expecting you. Yeah, I know, but they're your friends and they'll be fine with just you. Is it okay? Sure. I was afraid if I looked up into his eyes, I'd turn to stone. Carrie literally looks like a kid who just got told that Santa Claus isn't real. Now she has to face the embarrassment of telling her friends that no, their relationship did not magically change overnight. It's actually gotten worse. Guys, maybe we should just get a table for us four. I know it. Big's not coming. Miranda, what are you talking about? He's coming, isn't he? I didn't know if I had the heart to tell Charlotte that happily ever after really was just a myth. Oh, but wait, Big showed up after all. Santa Claus does exist. <laughs> then he spills Samantha's tea. So Samantha, tell me, <laughs> no. did you ever get it on with that old coot? Bro. <laughs> <sighs> Way to be a girl's girl, Carrie. Remember that sine wave? We're taking a dip again because now Big is openly disrespecting Carrie by leering at other women in her face. Other women who don't look a thing like Carrie, I might add. They go out to dinner and Big continues playing in Carrie's face by making a show of his arrogance. Excuse me, you can't smoke that in here. You're absolutely positively sure about that? I checked the zoning on this particular table 
And I'm pretty sure this table's in a cigar-friendly zone. Well, I don't mind, but it's for the other patrons. Oh, you mean if those five patrons don't mind, it's okay with you? One second. Excuse me, I'm sorry. Would it be okay if I smoke this? And please, let me preface this by saying I'd like to buy everybody a round of drinks. Apparently, the other patrons aren't bothered at all. I didn't have the guts to tell Big that he was actually kind of bothering me. When Carrie catches Big staring at another woman, she once again deflects by not telling him what she's actually mad about. I... I hate that cigar. And you told me right to my face. I wanted to tell him that I was afraid he could never love me the way I wanted to be loved. I was afraid that maybe he didn't really have the capacity to love anyone but himself. I was afraid that given the chance, he'd break my heart again. But I cheated and just said, I guess I was afraid. You wouldn't even sign the card. I'm afraid we don't want the same things. I want someone who's going to be with me until the end of a wedding. Come on, I mean, what do you want from me? What do I want from you? Nothing. I don't want anything from you. Well, what do you want me to tell people? Nothing. Good idea. Let's keep it quiet. Don't you want to stand still with me? You dragged me out to a park at three in the morning to ask me if I want to stand still with you? Oh, but if you thought that was bad, Big ramps it up by making Carrie wait half an hour for him at his apartment. Sorry. You're a half hour late. Your doorman thinks I'm a hooker. Did you make any money? <laughs> Not funny. I hate waiting here for you. There's a coffee shop around the corner. You could have waited in. She's understandably upset, but Big does nothing to soothe her, especially when she suggests having a key to his apartment so she doesn't have to wait in a damn coffee shop for him. You know, if you gave me a key, I could wait upstairs next time. Or you could stay at my place sometimes. It's easy to pick my locks. But then I like my bed. This all leads to probably the most explosive fight they've ever had. As if Big couldn't explain in any other unsubtle ways that the only active person in this relationship is Carrie, Ooh. Big acts like she's not even in his bed when they're asleep. And then this happens. Ah, damn it! Oh, 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 Carrie! Oh, are you alright? No! Okay, Big is an absolute prick, a breadcrumber, and has most likely read the 48 Laws of Power. He is a finance bro after all, but he still does not deserve to be hit in the face. DV is bad even when it's female on male. And I'm just adding that in there because I absolutely despise when people girl bossify women abusing men. What the fuck? Yes, honey, slay queen. You better knock him the fuck out even if he didn't hit you first. To make matters worse, Carrie doesn't even want to let Big sleep. So she wakes him up by dropping ice cold water on his face, doesn't give him the ice pack, and finally decides to explain herself. The thing is, the other night wasn't just about the cigar. I hate that you look at other women. I hate that I don't have a key to your place. You've never spent the night at my place. You can't even make space for me in your bed. And it's not your fault because I never say it. So now I punched you, so now I have to say it. I feel like I'm back in your life and nothing has really changed. And I know you can't change a man and you definitely can't change a man like you, but I still want s something to change a little bit for me. Physical violence is never the answer. I'm gonna go. She doesn't hear from him for a few days until he shows up randomly dressed like Shaft with a humongous black eye. Sorry. Get uh. your motherfucking hand out of my face. <laughs> These two morons can't communicate until something forces them to, so Carrie's right hook is the impetus for Big finally laying his cards out. Maybe you need a key to know that I'm crazy about you. But the thing is, I've given out, like, five keys and you never get them back and, and and maybe i hog my bed but i mean it's my bed and well i like you in it wow i should hit you more often <laughs> summary he's a king baby and he doesn't want to change he spends the night at carrie's for the first time and carrie says this i realized that neither of us would ever fundamentally change but we were talking about it and maybe that was the biggest change of all <sighs> Okay, so if the last episode's DV incident wasn't terrible enough, let's add some cheating into the mix. For whatever reason, Big rewards Carrie's abuse with the infamous Judith Lieber Mallard bag. She's been itching to tell this man that she loves him and it slips out even after her inner monologue vetoed the gift. It was just wrong. I didn't know what to say except, I love you. Oh, well. You're welcome. Uh 
Okay, first of all, how is this bag proof that he doesn't love her when she has a truckload of gaudy, weird purses just like this one? Remember the sign wave. The two high schoolers go to dinner and Big runs more game on her by future faking her out. It's from a small winery in the heart of Tuscany. I rented a villa there one summer with the ex. I've always wanted to go back with someone I actually liked. Carrie thinks Big is about to tell her he loves her, but ah, ah, ah. Listen, there's something I've been meaning to tell you ever since the night I gave you the purse. Yeah? You can take it back if you don't like it. That became the first night I wanted to tell Big. I hate you. Obviously not happy with the relationship and still waiting for those elusive three words to be reciprocated, Carrie attends a Park Avenue party with Big and is horrified to learn that this rich finance bro is friends with other rich people who are nothing like her. I don't know how much more evidence Carrie needs to break it off with Big because they're simply incompatible, but when she's banished to the balcony since she can't smoke indoors, she meets yet another guy to use to make Big jealous. Carrie. Hey. Jeremiah? Jeremiah was a famous downtown performance artist. We had engaged in a mild flirtation for years. So who are you here with? Oh, some guy. Hey, I just got a new tattoo. You want to see it? Yeah. yeah. Wowza. Mm. How far down does that go? Um, excuse me, what the actual f*** are you doing? Big's friend immediately snitches on Carrie and he confronts her. Please stop. You're embarrassing me. Well, maybe if you join me on the terrace like a gentleman, we wouldn't be standing here having this conversation. Let's just go. No, you go. I'm having a good time. Carrie leaves with Jeremiah and successfully punishes Big for not saying he loves her, although the only person making any effort in this dumpster fire union is Carrie. Waking up the next morning after cheating on Big, she gets a call from him. Since she now has the upper hand, Big needs to reclaim some of his power by being vulnerable with the most aggressive and forced I love you I have ever heard in my entire life. Well, I fucking love you. All right, you know I do. Carrie doesn't care, however, and accepts his begrudged declaration with another man in her bed. I felt like I was the lowest of the low, but I never told Mr. Big. I figured everything before I love you just doesn't count. Unless it's Aiden. I love you, Carrie. Bruh. With a hidden affair in tow, a brush with DV, and enough breadcrumbs to make Thanksgiving dressing, Big and Carrie's situationship chugs along. Their latest issue? Big doesn't want Carrie leaving anything of hers at his place. Um, excuse me, what the actual f*** are you doing? I'm spending the night at Big's. Oh my god, after all this time, you don't have so much as a drawer there? Big is weird about stuff. Talk to him about it. With Big, I think it's best to walk softly and carry a big purse. This is the woman that he allegedly loves. I f***ing love you. All right. Carrie knows their relationship is not meeting the proper milestones, so she attempts to leave some of her things at his apartment. She even brags about this to her friends. I did leave a hairbrush, hairdryer, razors, tampons, and eye makeup remover. Wow, good for you. This blows up in her face when Big comes by and presents her with what she thinks is another gift, but really it's a side chick with fries. Hey, what's this? Well, just a few things you left at my place. Oh. Carrie confronts Big about never wanting to see a trace of her in his apartment, and he tells her that he's happy with the way their relationship is. I meant to leave that stuff at your apartment. I don't wake up looking like this. I actually need stuff to look like this, and it would be nice not to have to carry it around all day with me like a nomad. And you can leave stuff here. I don't want to leave stuff here. Well, not a lot of stuff, just like socks. You want me to leave socks here? Well, never mind what I want. What do you want? Well, let's save an hour. Why don't you just tell me what I want? No, really. In your mind, what is the ideal living situation for two people in a relationship? Exactly what we have. Carrie goes along with it even though she knows this isn't ideal, but her doubts melt away one morning when preparing to go to her own place to groom herself. Why? I wish I were kidding, but this is why. And suddenly I realized I didn't have to worry about leaving something behind because I was there. That's right. Carrie finds a hidden photo of the two of them and decides that this is all she needs to stay a little bit longer. This reassures her relationship enough until the next major bomb drops. <laughs> you know what it is. Charlotte wants to do a share in the Hamptons. So are we thinking about doing something or should I go in on that? Actually, there's a possibility I'm not going to be here this summer. I may have to move to Paris. 
for work, just for a while. A long while. Seven months, maybe a year. Wait. Wait, 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 wait. How long have you known about this? It's been in the works for a while. I'll, I'll know more details after this trip. When did you plan on telling me? When I knew more. Nothing's definite. I mean, don't get carried away. I wasn't even a factor in his decision-making process. Tell me what's going on. Is that too much to ask? You know, one minute he's all over me, and the next minute he's pushing me away, and I just, I just cannot believe this is happening again. Okay. Carrie didn't dump big after she realized he was screwing all of the brunettes in Manhattan. Fine. Carrie didn't dump big after he was disrespecting her by staring at other women in her presence. Fine. Well, no, it's not fine, but walk with me here. Carrie didn't dump big after he refused to make her life easier by letting her leave some of her things in his apartment since he rarely comes to her place. Fine. But this? Not telling her about a major change that will no doubt affect the future of their relationship? This should have been the last straw. However, like I said in the previous video, Carrie is nothing if not persistent because although she bitched him out over the phone, I would like to know how you could even think of going to Paris and not even think about discussing it with me. Huh? Can we get into this another time? I was sleeping. After talking to her friends, she decides to keep putting in the unreciprocated work. Big comes home from Paris after his week-long break from Carrie and she arrives, on time, unlike Big, with Whack Arnolds and a plan. Big is already drunk. He knows their relationship is about to end tonight. Big arrived on the 9 p.m. flight. I was at his door by 10 to welcome him home in style. Bonjour! Mm. Carrie introduces her plans to rearrange her entire life to go live in a foreign country just to continue dating a man who won't give her a key to his place and doesn't even want her things in his apartment. I've been thinking about this. We can make this work. We can do le phone sex and if things get really bad, then I'll move to Paris for a while and write le sex in the city. And then he says this. But you'd be moving to Paris for yourself, right? I mean, don't move for me. Well, why would I move to Paris if it wasn't for you? I don't want you to uproot your life and expect anything. Carrie's BSOD is triggered when she finally realizes that he doesn't care. I don't care. I am such an idiot. I'm running around town in a beret, buying your greasy food, and you don't even care if I'm in your life. Would you calm down? No, you know what? I am, I am so tired of calming down. Look, I have to be in a relationship where if I have to go to Paris, I have to go to Paris. But it's just something I've got to do in my own time. Look, I have to do things on my time frame. This is my third marriage. How do you think that makes me look? Why is it so hard for you to factor me into your life in any real way? I can't do this anymore. I understand. I hate that it took this much for Carrie to finally exit stage left. Later, Big drops by for some breakups and then Carrie dumps him. Go to Paris. Let's not pretend we're something we're not. Post breakup, Carrie is so traumatized that her friends attempt to goad her into therapy. Honey, you're obsessed with talking about Big and frankly, we can't take it anymore. Maybe you should think about whining to a shrink. A few episodes later, Carrie and the girls end up splitting a share at the Hamptons for the summer, the same plans that Big turned down due to Paris. While she's being waited on hand and foot by the girl from Bully, she ends up running into, just guess. <laughs> After Carrie's replacement leaves, she awkwardly talks to Big and even throws the fact that she's on a date with one of the aliens from Galaxy Quest in his face to make him jealous. Who is she? She's this girl that I met in Paris. So you're just in from Paris for the weekend? The Paris deal fell through. I planned on calling you. I certainly didn't want to run into you like this. I'm here on a, on a date too, it's somewhere. It's Dr. Bradley Migo. He's good on paper, you know, probably like Natasha. I'll see you in the Hamptons or back in the city. Carrie runs away and then pukes, realizing that she was probably being played this entire time. Why else would the picture of them be tucked away in his underwear drawer? Why else would she not be able to leave her things at his place? Why else would he have not told her about Paris until the last minute? I have another theory that Big had already met Natasha prior to the Paris debacle and was planning to move there until the two decided to live in New York instead. Because Carrie is indeed a masochist. Seeing Big with the antithesis of her existence isn't enough for her to leave him alone, so she randomly calls Big and gets Natasha instead. Hello? 
Realizing he has caller ID, she calls him back and sputters a bunch before he takes pity on her and agrees to lunch. Upon meeting Big, Carrie thinks it's a good sign that he's nervous, but he's actually about to shit bricks because he knows eventually he will have to tell Carrie something that she doesn't want to hear, even though she asked. Maybe we should make a pact. We don't talk about our relationships until they get really serious or something. Carrie, it is serious. We're engaged. Carrie's BSOD flares up again and she engages in yet another public fight with him and leaves, but not before taking out the hostess and two innocent servers first. How can you be engaged? You have a problem with commitment, remember? You told me you never wanted to get married again, ever. Well, things change. Meaning what? You just didn't want to marry me. Look, Natasha and I... Don't say her name to me. Don't you dare say her name to me. You string me along for two years and then you marry some 25-year-old girl after only five months? You know what? I have to go. I have a headache. (gasps) Don't! Help me. Don't you help me. Wait, wait. What? What is it? Don't end it like this. No, you're the one that ended it like this. I was trying to be friendly. So go, go. Be engaged. Have a nice life. Don't worry about me. I'm fine. These steps are very dangerous. Somehow, after this meltdown that Carrie brought on herself, Big is the one who calls her, drink in hand, to apologize for how everything went down. It's me. Are you there? Well, I'm calling to say I feel bad about last week. Hated the idea of someone else telling you. I feel like a real shit. I'm sorry. You know, I would never, ever hurt you deliberately. I know you wouldn't. Carrie knows damn well she has zero intentions of being friends with Big because they were never friends. But since she still wants him in her life just in case he changes his mind, she fakes like they can eventually all get drinks together so she can talk about how she punched him in the face that one time or how she caught him on a date with another woman. Fun. She gets an invite to their engagement party, which she freaks out over and promptly discusses with her friends. I can't believe my ex-boyfriend is six blocks away at the plaza right now having an engagement brunch. I can't believe he had the nerve to invite you. Oh, no, no, no. It's, it's my own fault. I had to make the big let's be friends speech. Needing to feel better about herself, she decides that Big didn't choose her because she's got curly hair and is too complicated. Ladies, I am having an epiphany. The world is made up of two types of women, the simple girls and the Katie girls. I am a Katie girl. But I think him being punched in the face might have something to do with it. Carrie walks home and passes the engagement party. When she sees Big, he actually ditches his fiance to chat with her. Well, you're late, the party's over. I'll say it is. Hey, I have a question for you. Why wasn't it me? Carrie. No, seriously, come on, be a friend. I don't know. It just got so hard. No! And she's... Yeah. Here, Carrie strokes his face while Natasha is looking in a last-ditch attempt to mark her territory and then quotes a movie he's most likely never seen. Your girl is lovely, Heather. I don't get it. And you never did. Girl, shut the f*** up. You thought you ate that? <laughs> And with that last delusional exchange, Carrie and Big are officially done so for the second time. Next season proves that these two don't even need to be in a relationship with each other for the mess to continue. You can't just come back into my life and f*** it all up. Carrie, I see you. We're so over. We need a new word for over. 